Hey everyone, this is Mr. Everything, and today I wanted to do a 2021 update for the iPhone 8 Plus. Now, I'm recording this in late December of 2020, assuming we meant, in case we don't make it to 2021, but I really don't think much will change software-wise uh, with this phone's experience from 2020 to 2021. I'm sure it's going to be supported for at least a few more years. It's a fairly capable phone. Um, it's on iOS 14 and it's obviously going to be on iOS 14 and 2021. I'm not sure if there'll be any more uh, smaller updates until then, but it probably would just be bug fixes. I don't think there's going to be many features with this older technology that they would be adding to it. So I believe the experience up until, uh, assuming with iPad or I iOS 15 will come out late 2021, should uh, mostly apply for uh, the next year, the coming year. And I just want to talk about my experiences with the phone, how it's held up. And this one, I probably have more to say than what the iPad uh, reviews I recently did. Uh, one thing that I don't like at all is with this phone, hopefully it, you can see all those cracks in it. I've always kept it in this uh, Apple leather case. I really try and take care of my phones, as you can see. I'm not sure how we got there, but the front is in excellent condition. The sides aren't chewed up. The only times I've ever dropped it would be on carpet in my home from like the bed, so we're talking maybe three feet, in the case. And it's crazy when you see those videos where they're dropping iPhones from ladders on cement and concrete and they don't crack. And then you have it in a case and you drop it on carpet and it cracks. Now, I'm not sure. I'll link the video from last year but I'm, if anyone would be interested, but I'm assuming that the cracks weren't this bad. They started here, then this one appeared later, because I did drop it a couple times, and they just keep cracking further out. But I would say that, I'm not sure why I'm so hung up on this, but uh, they're not that bad looking. I'm sure you've seen other ones where they look like really flaking, like the glass is just flaking off, to where these at least are just like spider web cracks. There's not you can see a little bit where it kind of looks chipped, but that's why I decided to put this glass screen protector on. I should have put it on before. I'm not sure if it would have saved it from happening, but that's of note. It still works fine. I'm not sure if it would affect the water resistance. It probably would, but I, I take pretty good care of it. So I'm not, I really liked, we mentioned the, the, the product red. I have the uh, 11 Pro Max now. It's the midnight green. It's, the Midnight Green is probably the nicest looking color from that uh, series, but the product red was just really eye-catching. The back's a little kind of toy looking, but that, but I have a cover on it. But this, that anodized red aluminum just looks excellent, and it would be nice to have that on the newer phones, whether it be the uh, 11 or 12. Now, this phone is unlocked, so I can use it on any carrier, and I've used it on a lot of them. So uh, hopefully that makes it easier to sell because that's what I'm looking to do here. But let's see, go to battery. What really surprised me is the battery health is still excellent on this phone. I've seen so many people on Facebook Marketplace with phones that are one or two years old, uh, 11s or uh, 10s Maxes, even the Max model. And I would ask them what the battery health is. It'd be 88, 86. So these are phones that are at least one or two years newer than this phone. And this phone gets charged every day. And somehow I'm still on 88%. It, it was on 89 and stayed there for months and months, maybe almost a year. One thing of the percentages is a lot of times it'll go down by multiple, so it mo might go down to 84 or 82 the next time. But still, for being a 2018 model, because the Product Red came out, I believe, in May of 2018, even though it was a 2017 phone. I had it since it had 99 battery health. And uh, I think that maybe possibly the deciding factor is I now charge my iPhones with a wireless charger. I lay it on my alarm clock next to my bed. So when I go to sleep, just lay it there and it charges. I don't have to worry about plugging it in and out, especially since my iPad Pro uses USB-C and this is lightning instead of changing out the cable or having a different charger. It's just easier to use a wireless charger. And it's not the fastest charge, 
but it's definitely uh, perfect for me and especially if you do it overnight doesn't matter how long it takes then I believe it's a 7.5 watt so it's a slower charge and that might just be what's uh, keeping this battery running and a lot of people probably use their phones more they're using them to watch videos and play games uh, if I'm out and about but aside from that I'm always watching my videos on YouTube on uh, my iPad doing most of my web browsing on my iPad I'm just using the phone for emails, texts, uh, Instagram, a little bit of, of Facebook marketplace, and uh, you know, just small stuff like banking and weather, which that's not gonna kill your battery. But uh, that's uh, my long-winded um, discourse on the battery. I'm going to go ahead and put this back in the case. This is the Midnight Blue, and I don't know how well this will pick up on camera. It's basically the Midnight Black now. I mean, it, it's definitely held up. If I can stay in focus here. You can see a little bit of the blue remnant, but it's pretty dark. Most of the nicks and cuts kind of smooth out. And it's not that bad a shape. Definitely, I like the feel of the leather. It has that nice leather smell. It looked better when it was still a little more blue, but it did patina quite nicely. But it was really striking to have this brighter blue. And to mention the battery life again, I could get through a full day, but it would almost always need charged every day. Even just letting it sit with all the antennas and everything on, it'd go down significantly to where the uh, 11 Pro Max I have now, that's just excellent on battery life. I can still charge it every day just to do a 20-30% you know, top up but I could go a couple of days probably and not run it down to where this one, you kind of want to get it on that charger at some point every day. And look at that. Now in my situation, I think the jump from the 8 Plus to the 11 Pro Max I have, and I'm going to do a video comparing those two phones, is huge. Everything is different. A no touch ID, smaller bezels, the notch, immensely better cameras, better performance, can do more and bigger screen um, compared to the iPad review or comparisons I've done of 10.5 to 2020 11 inch there are definitely a lot of differences but it's not the biggest exchange to where this this is really the old Apple and a lot of people like that and that is the appeal of this phone and why I kept it for so long and I still could keep going with it but I did want to make the upgrade and have some longevity and several years out of the current phone I have. And I might as well mention it because it's something that unfortunately pretty much does affect everyone. Um, most of the time for me, because I have uh, obviously YouTube here, I don't have to have a mask on, mostly just at stores, and I really don't need to be on my phone in stores. So that doesn't affect me too much, but anytime you do have a mask on, you can't get the face ID to work. I would assume just because of the iPad Air with the Touch ID and the um, power button that they'll probably put it in the power button to so usually test things on the iPad and then bring it, because it's a smaller user base, then bring it to the widely popular iPhone if it works and everything. So I mean maybe they'd do it under the screen, but I'm assuming it'll probably be in the power button. Obviously it wouldn't make sense to get rid of Face ID, I think they'll just use both together. I think that would be the perfect combination. I believe Android's been doing that for years, but I do think Apple usually is better with their biometrics. I'm not sure if through any type of software updates they could just do the scan off your eyes and forehead because I know like with uh, certain countries that aren't as nice as our country where everyone's tracked, I think they can do um, face facial recognition off of just the uh, iris of the forehead. So I'm not sure if that could be done or if it would just have to be, they'd have to implement a Touch ID to get around that issue. And another difference with the, this to the newer phone, this is uh, just a regular, I'm not sure if it's IPS or LED, doesn't really matter, but it's just a regular type of screen to where the newer iPhones are all OLED. So this is really the perfection of Steve Jobs' design, home button, more of a traditional looking device. Not that the new ones have gotten too far away, but yeah, more subdued, more subtle camera, not the huge 
cut out, but I, I kind of like that myself, the larger cameras that are more capable. And I can open up some stuff here. I got that. And I've never had any problems ever with speed with this phone, so I'm not going to make a big deal about this. And I might do more as far as speed and performance in my comparison from the old to the new, because just for everyday use, uh, the limiting factor for me is just going to be my internet. But you know, to me, it's still a big screen, but I could always go bigger. And then most of my banking here. I use Mint Mobile. It's a great service. It uses T-Mobile's towers. I'm always connected with my Apple Watch. I don't always wear it, but I always have it connected. And this is a big complaint that I had with my iPad, is I would always get, you know, most of my memory was always being used. And that's the case on the iPhone 8 Plus with the uh, 3 gigs of RAM. But I don't have that many tabs open because I'm not doing that much web browsing on this device. Well, that's what my iPad's for. So yes, it probably is a significant advantage to have the larger RAM sizes in the newer iPhones. But for me, and probably for a lot of people that want an older phone, you're probably not as anal about having a bunch of tabs open doing a bunch of multitask it's probably just a phone to have a phone and uh, I think you'll be able to get around that for texting watching a YouTube video email you're not going to max out that RAM and even if you do if you don't if you close your old apps you're not going to run into too many reloads so to me it's still an excellent phone uh, I like everything about the 11 Pro Max more but it's well served me and this it was just that's my main complaint is just that the back got cracked probably have to sell it uh, personally because Apple won't give you any money for it now but uh, I think most people would still be okay with that compared to most phones I see for sale that are in much worse shape and again the front is in excellent condition um, as far as what I recommend this phone not really if you're tight on money and uh, you can get one that's not all destroyed then yeah but aside from that I would really recommend getting the SE it is the iPhone 8 shell or body. I believe it has, as usual, the newer internal components, but you'll still have Touch ID. It will be smaller because it's just the 8, not the Plus. But if you want this phone, I would highly recommend just getting the SE new and dealing with a slightly smaller phone. Otherwise, unless you can get a really good deal on your local uh, Facebook or I know Straight Talk often, if you want Straight Talk, they usually bundle a, you know, a phone. Maybe you get it for $200 brand new the brand new battery so that would be worth it but aside from that I couldn't really recommend this phone if you still have this phone there's nothing wrong with it it's still an excellent phone it still served me well uh, since I have an iPad and computers I don't use it like a power user I use it all the time but I'm not doing too much intensive work on it so it's still for uh, average user gets the job done but if you can if you can get a good deal or you have the money I definitely would recommend the uh, 11 Pro, 11 Pro Max, or 12 Pro, or 12 Pro Max. I think the uh, 10S series really is uh, not worth it because they still go for a lot of money. I would just put a little more and get a much newer, more capable phone. Aside from that, I might do a comparison of this to the 11 Pro Max. That's the phone I would go with, and it is the phone that I went with. So let me know if you need to know anything else or I can explain anything any better. But that's my opinion and my experience with the uh, iPhone 8 Plus and what I think it'll you know, be capable of in uh, 2021. So uh, thanks for watching, and you'll see me in the next one. Have a good one.